As you know, this is a PayPal button. And if you want to allow people to buy your book directly from you, whether it's PDF, EPUB, or Mobi files, or another file, you can use PayPal buttons, and there are a couple of methods to use them. If a reader wants to buy this way and they click on this button, they'll be directed to PayPal, and it will show the item that they're about to buy, and they can log in and purchase it. And then after their purchase, they're going to be sent to the download page. And this, of course, is the download page, as you remember. And if anybody comes to it, they can scroll down, and the different versions of the book are here. And so if anybody wants the PDF that they just bought, they click on it here. And then here's their book, which they can obviously save to their computer or read online, however they want. Through the Merchant Services tab at PayPal is where you can take care of all of these things. Now, eventually you're going to be creating a payment button for your website or blog. But first, let's take a quick look at some of my saved buttons. This one up here is that button that we were just looking at. And so let's view the code. And you'll see down here that there is one type of button that works with HTML JavaScript and this is actually what the buyer view is going to be of the button. There's another type of button that works with email and even though this doesn't look like email this is basically the website that we were just at where we could have purchased the book. Now if you use this link here you'll need to insert an image, a PayPal button image and then hyperlink it to this destination, which, which we'll show. I have a WordPress.com blog, which doesn't allow for JavaScript in its HTML coding. And so I have to use this type of email button on that WordPress.com blog. For all of my other websites, I can use this HTML code and just copy and paste it in HTML code areas within the website. So how would you create a button like this? Again, through the Merchant Services tab, just click Create Payment Button. And it's probably going to be a Buy Now button. And then you can fill all these things out, and they're actually pretty self-explanatory. The item name is probably going to be the title of your book to keep it easy. You don't need an ID. Uh, set the price that you want for the book. I would keep it at least as high as the Amazon price so they don't price match guarantee it. You don't typically need to fill out this customized area, but you can if you want. You're not going to have shipping or tax with an ebook. And you really don't need stuff from step two which has to do with tracking the inventory, things like that. That's more for physical products than for digital products. Step three is important. You don't need to worry about changing quantities. If you want special instructions, that's fine. You don't need your customer's shipping address. I recommend checking this box and sending them back to where they were when they initially made their purchase, which is probably your website, if you have a bookstore page, or something else, wherever they were when they initially started purchasing from you. This is the important one that you really want to have done right. This is where people are going to go after purchase. This is where the download page goes. And so here we are at the download page. This is the URL that you want to copy and paste. I really don't recommend typing this in. So just highlight it, Control c to copy. Then back at PayPal, just paste that URL into this box. And that's how customers are automatically going to go to the download page after purchase. It's a system that runs on autopilot, and you don't have to be there. So that's great and then just click Create Button. And then you can just copy and paste this website HTML code into your website or blog. 
and there are dozens and dozens of options. So just as a quick example, if you're working with a blog that takes HTML code and JavaScript, like Blogger, just click on HTML, and then add that code, and then we can preview it, and then you'll see that button there, and if you click on it, it will work. Another way to do it is with the email code and this is the link that you'll want to add to an image of a PayPal button. So you can copy this link. Control C to copy. Now where do you get an image? Well you can search for them on Google. If you go to Google and type in a search for PayPal buttons images this is what's going to come up and if you scroll down you can find some really good ones through the developer.paypal.com links. And so here's a pretty good one, this documentation archive. And then you're going to see all these different versions of PayPal buttons. And you can choose whichever one you want, whichever one you think goes best with your site. Some are larger, some are smaller. Um, you can even just right click and save the image, save it to your computer. So we'll save this image. We'll just save it on the desktop and call it PayPal. And save. And let's add that image as an alternate PayPal button to this same blog post. So we'll go into Compose Mode, and we'll go beneath the one that we had, and we'll call it um, Email Version of PayPal Button. And we'll go down a space or two. We'll insert a picture. And let's find that image. There it is. We'll add it. And then we'll need to add the hyperlink to it. So we'll go to link, add link, and we'll paste in that address. Click OK. Preview it. And now both of these PayPal buttons are going to work. This one is done with the HTML for the website, and this one is the email version that's just an image that goes to that web page. Either one of these will work, and when you get to PayPal and make a purchase, it will automatically take you to the download page. So that's a great way to sell books from your own website or blog.